Hey everyone, welcome to Joko Outdoors. I'm Brian, and today we're going to be talking about uh, 10 essentials, the 10 basic essentials that you need for your RV. Okay, these are things that when you buy your RV, they're not going to tell you that you need these things. Um, there's really going to be 10 basic essentials and then one extra. Um, stay tuned to the end if you want to see what that extra is. Um, also, I would like to say that if this is your first time here visiting, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment below in the, in, in the comments down below, and then hit that notification bell. That way you get updates every time we upload a video. Um, so, that being said, let's get to it. Alright, first thing I want to talk about is when you buy your RV, they're they're not gonna sell all this stuff. It's not all this stuff's not gonna come with the RV. See, whenever I first purchased my RV, I thought this stuff came with it. However, I learned after I bought it that the only thing that it comes with, little ladybug there, the only thing that it comes with is a power cord so that you have power. And that's about it, okay? It doesn't come with any of this other stuff. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is let, let's do safety. You want to have your wheel chalk, okay? You have to have have to have a wheel chalk to chalk the wheels. Keep it from rolling, okay? This is just your basic wheel chalk. You can get it at Walmart. You can get it at uh, Amazon, anything like that. Um, if I can find a link, I'll leave a link in the comments below or in the description below, I'm sorry. Um, just go on there, click it. You know, these, these things aren't, aren't too expensive. Um, I think a pair of these, two of these were about 10 bucks. Um, you can get these on sale for about $10. So that's the first thing. Um, let's do safety first, all right? Also, you have to be able to level your camper because not every, not every uh, campground is going to be 100% completely level. You might have to level it in a, uh, you know, from left to right or, or uh, front to back. Um, and so in order to do that, uh, as far as the left to right goes, you want these Lynx levelers right here. Um, now that's what we have as Lynx levelers. Camco does make, uh, does make some leveling uh, kits as well. Uh, we got these on sale, that's why we bought these, but these work great. They're kind of like, let me take one out and I'll show you. They're almost like Legos, all right? So you have these right here and each one is about an inch thick, all right? That's what we figured out. You can take these, you can stack them on top, you can stack them side by side like that, put two of them together, three of them together to make it longer if you need it, all right? Um, these work really great when trying to level. Again, these are one inch, these are one inch thick, so they're one inch tall. Um, so, you know, if you, if you need to level and you only need to go an inch, all it's gonna take is one of these right here. Um, two inches, of course, two of these. Um, usually what I like to do, if I've got to go two inches, I like to put two of them together like this to give it more support on the tire. So instead of the tire just sitting on one of these, it sits on two of them. And you have one on the bottom for the extra support. Okay. So let's get these put up. And next, again, this is stuff that does not come with your RV. So whenever you whenever you uh, are purchasing your RV remember that this stuff does not come with us so you're gonna have to uh, plan and budget for all this extra stuff all right you have to have water connection so that's what we have here we have your your water hose right here this is your fresh water hose it's white your black water hose is gonna be orange do not get those mixed up um, this is just your basic Camco 25 foot water hose now I'm not very fond of this water hose it was one to get us started but this is why you can see it's all kinked up and if you go if you go and you check up here in this link above where we did the how to connect your RV you'll see that this hose actually kinked up again that's up here in the uh, top right corner um, this this hose kinked up and for a minute I thought we were having 
problems with our water pressure and everything, didn't have hardly any water. After going back and looking at the hose, we realized that the hose was kinked. Once we got it straightened out, it started working fine. Camco does make, Camco does make a no kink water hose and that's what I'm gonna end up switching over to. I will switch over to the, to the no kink water hose um, and that uh, should prevent this from happening. Um, it's also a lot easier to store away. This thing, you gotta roll it up. I've actually got a hose, a holder that I put mine in and I store it in. So it kind of keeps it nice and neat and tidy. All right, next, with this water hose, we're gonna do our RV water filter. All right, these RV water filters, uh, I think these are good for, I wanna say three months, six months. Um, we're gonna put, we're gonna put a link to all this stuff below and in the description uh, of this, I'm pretty sure it's 90 days. So after 90 days, um, you have to, you know, swap this out. But what we have found is when we're using these, we can usually get, because we sometimes we go camping for a week, we're part-time campers, we're not full-time campers. Because we go camping for a week at the longest, other times might be for a three or four day weekend. A lot of times we can get three or four uses out of this before we have to throw it away. Um, it does come, whenever you buy this, it comes with this kink-free hose connector, and that, that plugs up, uh, usually I'll plug this up straight up to the water on the other side of the camper, you have your, your, your city water connection. I'll hook this side up to the city water connection and then hook the water hose up to the bottom side right here. That way it keeps it from kinking up going up to the uh, water connection. Now, with that, you wanna have this water pressure, pressure regulator. Some of these campgrounds have very high water pressure and most of these RVs, most of these campers really can't withstand anything more than 40 to 50 uh, PSI of water pressure. Okay, so that's what this is, a 40 to 50 PSI water pressure regulator. It's just your basic Camco uh, regulator. Um, they do make some that eventually I'm going to upgrade to that actually has a gauge on there to show you. Some of them are yellow, some of them are, you know, some of them are red, yellow, and green. Some of them tell you the actual pressure. Um, but this one just regulates between 40 to 50 PSI. Um, this, you want this because uh, if you do get to a campground that has high pressure, that high pressure can be bad for your lines inside there. If you don't have one of these uh, regulators and you know, you have, let's say you have 70 pounds of pressure, of water pressure going into your RV, your lines may only be rated for 40 pounds. Then you take the chance of exploding a line inside there, uh, water getting inside everything, um, you know, molding everything. It can get very expensive. So this is all uh, precautionary stuff to prevent things from happening, okay? Um, your water pressure regulator. And next, we have your splitter, okay? This, this goes straight up to your, to your uh, water valve outside, wherever it is. Some of them are the pump handle, some of them are the twist knob. Um, but you, you, you know, put this right on the, the water pressure valve, okay? And then you have a splitter right here. And what I do with this is I'll have one, uh, I'll have my water hose connected to this side right here, whichever side is closest to the uh, RV. And then the other side I'll use for like washing my hands or washing dishes outside if I need to do that, um, something like that. Um, so, you know, we, we have this, this is, I wouldn't say this is a necessity, but it is, and it does work really well, and it's, it's, it's a very great tool to have because um, if you do need to you know, wash your hands off outside or you do need to just go rinse off a pan instead of filling up your gray water tank inside, you can go out there and just flip this little, flip this little switch over, water come out, you know, now take it, it, it can be very, uh, very high pressure sometimes. You could even take this water pressure regulator, hook it straight up to the water valve and then connect this on there. And I think that's actually what we do. Um, yeah, I do recall that correctly. We hook this up just like this, because this is how I took it off. So we hook the water pressure regulator straight up to the valve, okay? And then we have your splitter right here. Water hose goes on one end and you have this other end for whatever you need use it for if you got to have an extra water hose uh, you know 
a short one for some some reason you got it there um, I think that's a necessity um, it, we've had it since day one and it has worked really well for us all right next you have your 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 jack pads right here this is just your camco basic jack pad I'm not going to take these apart because it's, it's very simple and easy to see and understand but you have you have your solid side then you have your your uh, checkered side over here and the checkered side is actually the side up so it's gonna go you're gonna take it you're gonna lay it down like this and what you're gonna do with that is whenever you're lowering your jacks remember your jacks are not for leveling they are support jacks do not use your jacks for leveling you have this jack pad right here if for the camp sites that are gravel you got extra support on this you've got a solid surface versus having rocks that shift and everything um, put this up under your jack pad to help give it a little bit of extra support if you have uh, if you're at a, a campsite that has a paved camp spot uh, a, pay, a paved uh, site then you don't necessarily need this now I know some of you are saying well you know I've got uh, a two by six block that'll work perfectly fine yes you're right a two by six block will work perfectly fine but for those of us who don't have two by six blocks just laying around you know I think I got these for I don't know five ten bucks um, we'll leave a link for them on uh, a link for them in the description below for Amazon all this stuff's gonna have links on there all right gotta have toilet paper okay now this is the Scott's RV toilet paper, and I'm going to tell you why I use the Scott's RV toilet paper. I've used a few different ones. I've used Camco. I've used, uh, I think Thetford makes some, and then I've used the RV, uh, the Scott's RV toilet paper. Okay, this is the softest. Um, I would compare this to you've seen the Charmin commercials or the Angel Soft. Uh, this is as soft as, as that kind of toilet tissue. Um, now here's the difference between RV toilet tissue and your basic toilet tissue um, that you use for your house. This breaks down a lot better than your than your regular RV or than your regular household toilet tissue. Your household toilet tissue is not going to break down as easy as this. I think this is a one one ply, maybe two ply. Um, and your household toilet tissue can sometimes be four ply, so it's a lot thicker, okay? But the Scots, one we have found is softer, okay? Everybody loves the softness of that. Um, and then two, we ran a test when we first got our, our camper. I ran a test to see which one broke down better, the Scots, the Camco, or the Thetford. And the Scots actually broke down. I put uh, it broke down a lot better. I put some uh, some RV holding tank treatment in there that would break down. Um, and what I found, I left it out for I don't know, let's say three or four hours. Left it out for something like some, something like that, just to see. I put it in. I put three different glasses out, and I put water in each glass, and then I took one one square. Of the toilet tissue of each one put it in each glass and then I put the holding tank treatment just a little bit not a whole lot just a little bit inside each glass and I spun it around just kind of try to break it down and, and see and when when I ended up dumping the stuff out this stuff this this Scott's RV toilet tissue came out in fine shreds okay versus the Camco and the Thetford that still broke down really good but you can still see flakes versus shreds inside there now some of you guys may, may say well you know flake flakes versus shreds isn't a big deal but you know for me I, I want it to break down the best it possibly can so that it doesn't mess up the sensors it doesn't uh, stick to the inside of my black tank um, and you're still gonna have that happen some but when you can when you can put uh, some kind of you know, use the toilet, use the, the, the toilet tissues that's going to break down the best and the RV uh, holding tank treatment that's going to help break it down the best. You're going to have, you're going to have less stuff sticking to the side 
um, it's gonna you're gonna have less that's gonna stick to the sensors and everything and it's just gonna come out it's, it's gonna keep your holding tanks a lot cleaner for a longer period of time so you know we this is what we use the it, it's the Scott's RV uh, RV toilet tissue there's a difference so we use that and to break this down right now we have the bioactive holding tank treatment okay this bioactive holding tank treatment and what it does is one it's a fragrance free it's hundred percent biodegradable it's non-staining it does clean the sensors it contains no formaldehyde now that's a big factor because a lot of campgrounds won't use they don't want you to use formaldehyde based uh, holding tank treatments they want it to be formaldehyde free free okay and then it does say that it breaks down waste and tissue all right bioactive I've used bioactive this was our first year using it and it doesn't do a bad job it does a fairly decent job but the reason I had to use the bioactive was because Camco when we first got started we used the Camco TST complete holding tank treatment which is green just like this so if you see the green formula then, then that's the right one. Um, but they made them in these little four ounce bottles and you could typically buy an eight pack and it was roughly about eight dollars, about a dollar a bottle. But that worked great because it was just the right size that you needed. You didn't have to, you didn't have to, to pre-fill anything like you do right here and everything. This works great though. Um, but you could just pour it right inside your black tank, you could pour it right inside your gray tank and have at it well so because we are part-timers our stuff got old and when I went to go use it this year I opened one up and it wasn't green anymore it was kind of a clear liquid with yellow with some kind of yellow base in there and I said no nah, I'm not gonna use that and then I looked at the expiration date and it had expired um, so I went to go try to find some and I couldn't find any uh, uh, in the bottles now they still have a big bottle like this of the, of the green TST and I could have got that but there's no pre-measured cup on there like there is with this one so Camco if you guys are watching if you're not gonna make the, the complete TST formula like the green right here in those bottles anymore go on your big bottles of TST complete put one of these on there so we can use that to measure it if you're watching this go do that because that would be something great to have on that TST but I ended up getting this instead because of that reason um, and this does it, it does a, a decent job it's, it's not a bad product it does a decent job but between the two between this and the TST complete to me the TST did a better job breaking down and cleaning the sensors um, next year I will be going back to the TST complete formula um, I will use that I'll just buy the big jugs and, and uh, Maybe just try to find a little four ounce bottle or something that I could fill it up with. Measure out the four ounces that I need to. So, those are the basic essentials right here. Guys, before we go any further in this video, I almost forgot one of the most important basic essentials for your RV. And that is your sewer hose. You have to have a sewer hose don't have a sewer hose you're not going to have a way to dump your black tank or your gray tank um, so you have to have a sewer hose this is a, a camco rhino sewer hose me personally i think this is the best hose on the market i don't think you're going to find one better than this um, I, I, I did a lot of reviews on these things before uh, before i bought one and everything and out of all the reviews that i read watched everything this this camco Rhino sewer hose got the best rating out of all of them. It has held up for us tremendously. Um, this one I think is a it's either a 15 or 20 foot hose, but they make them all the way up to I believe 50 foot. Um, maybe not quite that big, but pretty close to it. So sorry about that, guys. Let's get back to the video so we can get to that special uh, that that one special thing that you're going to need at the very end. Thanks again for watching. All right, so now we're getting to the bonus. You have your power. Um, we told you that it comes with a power cord. Um, 
know, they, they will give you that so you don't have to worry about buying a power cord. You got your water hose, your water connection, your filter, your levelers, your safety chalks, um, RV holding tank treatment, your toilet tissue and everything. Here is the special. When you are connecting up to your, R, uh, to your RV power, when you're connecting up out there, you want to have a surge protector. You want to make sure that you have a surge protector because there are times where that power will go out in the park. And if it goes out and, you know, they're not going to tell you, oh, hey, the power is going to be up in five minutes. You know, they're, they might come around and tell you, hey, we should have it up in five minutes, but it could come on at any point in time just like that. When that happens, it can send a surge all the way through all your power lines into the RV. And it can mess up fuses, it can mess up your breakers, you know, um, it can mess all that stuff up. It can mess up any electrical component inside the RV, okay? So you want to have a surge protector. Now, if you have these great big RVs, you know, like your fifth wheels and, and then your, your uh, Class C RVs, Class A RVs, that kind of stuff, a lot of those are already going to have a built-in surge protector. And if it has that, great. You don't have to worry about this. But if you have a travel trailer like what I've got right here, if it's a, you know, like a, I've got a 20 foot right here and all the way up to your 34 foot, some of your larger ones may have a, may have a built-in surge protector. But for the most part, your travel trailers are not going to have a built-in surge protector. So what do we use? We use the Camco Power Grip Power Defender. Ours is a 30 amp because we have a 30 amp uh, hookup. They do make a 50 amp in this. But I can tell you that there have been two occasions, two occasions where this surge protector has saved us. The first camping trip we went on down in Georgia, that camping trip, uh, I think we we're middle ways through the through the camping trip is uh, I think that Wednesday the power went out it just went out and when it did come back on this thing did its job so let me explain to you what how this works you have three lights green yellow and red okay let me see if I can get that a little closer all right so you have as you saw you have green yellow and red all right, when you first hook this up, you want to hook this up, you plug this into your power outlet, then you plug your power cord in right here. Before you plug your power cord in, you want to plug this up first. So plug this up to your outlet. When it's powering up, it's the, your, that green light is going to constantly flash. Okay. As long as it's flashing, it means it's still powering up, it's still monitoring everything. If it stays a solid green, then you're okay. If it turns red, then it means that you have over or under voltage. And you're going to have an automatic power reset when the power stabilizes. Okay, so this thing is going to automatically reset the power for you when the power stabilizes. If you have green and yellow, it means that the hot or neutral is reversed, okay? If nothing comes on at all, if you don't have a blue light, you ha you'll have a blue light right here, okay? Your blue light means that everything's on power, it, it's uh, incoming power, is coming in, your green solid is staying good and everything. If you don't have anything that comes on, it means that you have an open neutral or no power at all. Okay. So, all that's right there on the back, too. It's another thing I like about this. It's all on the back. And this thing has saved us on two occasions. We went earlier this year to a campground up here in North Carolina. And the power went out there just in the middle of the night. We were sleeping, and it went out. And... I woke up because I had the music playing softly and I was like, okay, the music's not playing, what's going on? And so I got up and I looked and all the lights were off. I went outside and looked in the campground and all the power was off in the campground. And sure enough, this thing did its job. Whenever the power came back on, this thing did not send power to the camper until the power had stabilized. 
Once it stabilized, then it sent power to the camper and everything was working fine. Had I not had one of these, uh, one of these surge protectors right here, I could have messed my camper up. So you guys don't forget to get one of these if you're buying an RV. These are your 10 basic essentials that you're gonna need to start with. And this is stuff that does not come with the RV. And you know, they're not gonna tell you that it doesn't come with this stuff. You're just gonna get the RV, and when you get the RV, you're gonna say, oh, where's all this other stuff? And then that's when they're gonna say, oh, well, you gotta go into our accessories department and go buy that stuff. So if you're thinking about buying an RV, if you're thinking about buying a travel trailer, go ahead and look into this, this stuff. Um, these are your basics, so look into getting the basic stuff right here. And you, you're gonna need a lot more. You're gonna find out that there's gonna be a lot more stuff that you're gonna need, and we'll do future videos on some of that stuff, but here's the basics for you. Again, I hope you guys really enjoy this video. Um, I will ask that you leave a comment below to tell us if you do use some of this stuff already, tell us what you use and your experience with it. We'd like to know because you might have uh, a little bit you might have a little bit more experience with some of this stuff than what we do you might have a different story than what we do you might have a story about why you don't use the Lynx levelers versus some other brand out there or why you choose to use the bioactive over everything else out there leave your comments below if you have had experience with any of this stuff if you have any questions ask a question below don't forget to go and like our page hit that subscribe button down in the uh, bottom right corner Hit that notification bell so that you get all the notifications every time we upload a video. And don't forget, we will be uploading videos uh, every Monday at 8 a.m. so you guys can tune in and watch. We thank you guys and we love you guys. And don't forget, this is God's country.